see you're a father to sons only. <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, my firstborn son came about in 1994, and it was the most joyful moment in my life. As I held him on my hands, and I lifted him up like the roots, Kinta Kunte, the way Kinta Kunte lifted his, um, his son, and uh, I said, behold, the only thing greater than thyself. That was the most joyful moment in my life, mm. holding my son. Then um, uh, two years later, a second born came. And two years later, a third born came. Mm. And then uh, a fourth born came so many years later. Yes. Unfortunately, my second born died. Actually, oh. this month on 31st, I will be commemorating his second anniversary since his death. And again, that marks the most, uh, the, the saddest moment in my life. Mm. When I walked out of my house at 10.30 p.m., as I looked for my son, because I was wondering where he is, and there on the tree my son hung, who had just graduated from Moy University with a degree in strategic management. My son died. And I had to fish him or get him out from the tree. It wasn't an easy task. It was not until midnight. So every time I remember this, it makes me sad, but it gives me strength to live, that I have to conquer. His death has given me strength like I have never had. Mm. Mm. So he hung himself on a tree? He hung himself, yeah. Did you ever get to know why? <clears throat> uh, he had mental health and now trying to reflect or maybe take back things I realize he had it from as far as grade 3, grade 4 now when I look at the incidents that were happening I realize that it dates back yeah. to the time when he was a boy yeah. maybe in class 3, class 4, class 5 mm. Mm. wow yeah. I'm sorry to learn about that mm. Uh, I, I read a lot that it's very hard for a parent to lose a child and uh, I'm sorry that you went through that. You said mm -hmm. that it has given you strength. It gives me strength because yeah. every time I think about him, I want to live forever. Every time I think about him, it's like I have a battle that I must win. And the only way of winning it is by telling his story, sharing his experience, um, it's just being good to my remaining sons, being good to their mother. Mm. That gives me strength. Mm. It colors my life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about uh, their mom. And um, so you, you got married when? We got married, um, we got married the last week of December 1993. But we started living together on the 1st of January 1994. Why were you apart for a week? Um, we were still trying to know each other more. Okay? Okay. I mean, we, I'd taken her from the village and uh, brought her to Nairobi. Mm -hmm. At that time, I was a student at uh, Kenya Armed Forces Technical College. Mm -hmm. I didn't have a house, so I was housed by a friend. Okay. Ah. Yeah, it was that kind of, I mean, we were, early, we were young, we were green, we were naive. <laughs> and I um, got into a marriage even before I was really prepared. Yes. But uh, I really loved her, and um, I wanted to make my life better than my many people that I had seen. Yeah. Um, I didn't really, I think my dad had challenges, uh -huh. so I wanted to make my marriage a great success. Mm. How old were you? Um, I was in 1994. I was 25 years old. Okay. Mm -hmm. mm. I was 25 years old. Okay. So a week mm. later, then you had your place, so she could come. And you start your marriage. No, life. actually, we stayed. Uh, we, we, we both stayed. I had a very good friend known as Senior Sergeant Matinde, who actually gave me a whole bedroom and told me, Brother, stay here until whatever you want. Oh, wow. For three months, I put up with him. Yes. Uh, that's in Embakasi Garrison. Mm -hmm. And uh, after three months, I told him, Now I have to go out because then I'll never learn to prosper, I'll never learn to grow. I have to go out and learn life. Mm. And uh, that's how we started. Mm -hmm. We moved to the slums of Soweto. We oh. lived in Soweto slums for about two months. Mm -hmm. Then there was a lot of theft. You hang your clothes and they're gone. Uh, power goes off and the moment you come into your house, your thing is stolen. So I graduated to Kayole Estate now. Okay? So I stayed in Kayole for 
the rest of the time until I moved to Moya base. Uh, my wife gave birth the same year, 1994, in the month in October. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, she had some complications. Mm -hmm. For four months, I virtually was like her nurse uh, because uh, she couldn't bend, she couldn't uh, wash clothes. Therefore, I was a student. I would do, I would um, leave. I mean, I would come home and wash the napkins. I don't know whether the pampas were there during that time mm. or they came much Maybe later. It was very expensive <laughs> and, you know, yeah. But I know that I had about three or four dozens of the napkins. napkins. So when I would come in the evening, the bucket is full of the napkins and I would wash them, wash them, and wash the dishes and do the necessary. For four months, I nursed my wife. Uh,